once I see that there's people that are joining, I'll start it. And um, Brett, you can you can start off with what you want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. And let me fix this volume right here from uh, YouTube, so I don't get double feedback. Okay. How's everybody doing? And the topic today is Mystery Babylon. How are you doing, Rob? Doing great. Thank you so much. Sounds good. And there are people in here, so everything is um, apparently recording, and it's all good. Um, Greensville, it's Max, and we are back, and we're talking about Mystery Babylon. We got Robert Breaker here, and we have The Last Generation. We're going to talk about this a little bit. Revelation 17, Revelation 18, some other things. So that's what we are doing. And here we go. Amen. So basically, we're going to talk about who we think Mystery Babylon is today. And this isn't a doctrinal thing. So we can all still stay in fellowship. We don't need to get upset at each other. You know, I, I believe it's America. Most people believe it's the Vatican or Rome or Italy. And that's fine. And so we can just bounce ideas off of there, how we see it, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, that's the most important thing here. We talked about this before we actually went live, is that these ideas are very philosophical. They're not hardcore doctrine. They're not something that is something with your salvation or anything like that. These are things that we're looking at and I guess maybe trying to predict the future or just looking at prophecy or we're, that's what we're doing. Right. Nothing to do with your salvation. Right. And just um, pray that the spirit guides you, you know, um, get rid of any pre, uh, preconceived notions of what you think for a minute. And maybe just maybe there might be something that you have missed you know, there might be something I have missed, um, but I'm going to show you where I've come to believe why it's a USA. And I know Roberts did um, several videos on this and why he believes um, a lot of it points to the Vatican, Rome. Um, and I've seen that, too. That's I was in that camp a while back, but we can just start and uh, simply go down and uh, read. Start with Revelation 17. We can read that. Well, you know, I have to light my torch first. Light your torch? Yeah, I have to light my torch. You believe something that's not agreeing with me? I have to light my torch. Well, get it ready. <laughs> get the flint ready, at least. <laughs> Why? No, I'm Why? just kidding. Now. <laughs> Is that a pitchfork in the background? Uh, oh, I see. Da -da -da. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so do uh, you want me to start with uh, reading yeah. Revelation 17? Okay, read yeah. the entire chapter if you would. Yep. That would be awesome. We'll do that. Okay. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee unto the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth had committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scar scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou marvel? I will tell thee of the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind that hath wisdom. 
The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as of yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and they shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it into their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of the God shall be fulfilled. Words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Amen. Amen. And okay, our contention is that that city is Vatican City. That's what we say, and you're saying it's America. Yeah, um, I would say first... Why, where in there would you say you get Vatican? Because I, as I read it anymore, I don't see Vatican anywhere. Nowhere. Well, I see Rome. First, first thing, though, read Revelation 18.4. And I'm sure we all agree on this, so let's start on the things that we agree on. Okay. Revelation 18.4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. So whoever she is, we're not supposed to be in her, the Bible says. All right. So we that are Christians, we're to have nothing to do with her, whatever she may be. I think that's quite important. And uh, there's several other verses, too, that talk about her. Um, All right. Do you want me to uh, tell you what I think that is, what you just read? Sure. Go ahead. The rapture. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the rapture. And why do you believe that? Because Mystery Babylon, okay, that is the start of the tribulation period, the seven years. Once Babylon has fallen, the fourth beast kingdom can now come into play. The fourth beast kingdom cannot take over as the fourth beast kingdom until we're done with the third. We're still in the third kingdom. Okay? And we can look at that, and I can prove that by going back to Daniel 7 and Daniel 8. Um, I'm not sure about the kingdoms that you're, you're talking about here. Okay, I will show you'll you. Have to, you'll have to explain the, uh, yep, the kingdoms. That's that's a good idea. Um, so these kingdoms that they're talking about, the four, there's four total. Okay, and if you go to Daniel chapter seven, starting with verse one, um, is when Daniel saw the. This is his first vision of these of these four beasts. Okay, um, I will start at verse three. Actually, I'll just start right here at, at verse two. It says Daniel spoke, and I said. <laughs> And said, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made and stand upon the as no, it made stand upon the feet as a man, and the man's heart was given to it. And behold, there's another beast, a second, like a bear, and it raised up itself on the side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said, un they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. And after this, behold, another, like a leopard, which had upon it the back of four wings of a fowl. The beast also, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Okay? Now the fourth so beast... Do you have yeah. like different ideas for all of all of this? Oh yeah, real simply. I can I'll tell you real simple. But the the fourth one right here, we know this fourth one is during the 70th week of Daniel when anti the antichrist Satan himself reigns upon the earth. Okay, this is his kingdom. After this I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, 
and it had great iron teeth and devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn, Antichrist, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in, in this horn were eyes like eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Okay, I'll stop right there just to reiterate what all this it means. Okay, um, we're in the end days, so we get to we get to look back and look at history now, and we could piece this all together. As a matter of fact, if you go all the way down, he explains and interprets the vision, as which we'll we'll do here in a second. But basically, this lion, the first beast, was Babylon. Okay, the second, this this bear was the Medes and the per and, and the uh, Persia, right? This third, like a leopard, which had four wings of a fowl. This one is um, Alexander the Great. When he died, he had four of his generals split the kingdom up from you know, and that's why he had four wings of a fowl because they spread to all corners of the earth. Those four kingdoms, and so those four kingdoms still exist today. Everything comes from this Grecian um, empire. It's all just a trickle down to where we are today. Everything is influenced by this, these four wings of a fowl. But if we go down um, to see the interpretation of it, he tells us what it is. And, and I know that this all makes sense once we get up there, but we have to understand that these, these four kingdoms. Okay. Here's the interpretation. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and even forever and ever. He's saying after all these kingdoms are done with, even the fourth, um, it goes back to the millennial reign. It's all Christ. Okay. He says, then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding and dreadful. And I'm not going to read it all because it's talking about the same stuff we were, the teeth of iron and nails of brass. But he goes right here and says, and of the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and the mouth that spoke very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. And I beheld the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. So this little horn that comes up out of the ten horns is what we see in Revelation 17, 18. This, this Antichrist starting his beast, his fourth beast system. What we're asking about, though, is, is that America? I mean, the I don't, fourth beast? I don't no. see that no. anywhere. No, the fourth beast is not America. Um, right here, verse 23, Daniel 7 Verse 23, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall, shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. This kingdom we will not see. We will be raptured. This is the one with the mark of the beast system, one world government, one world religion. This is all what we've read about, right? So this fourth beast is not here yet. And it can't come here yet. And that's why this is this is the whole thing. The fourth beast kingdom cannot come because mystery Babylon is in the way. See, the woman is riding the beast. OK, that's. Um, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall arise after them and shall be diverse from all the first. So we see that these ten horns. Okay, that come up. If we go to Revelation, I'll start at the beginning of Revelation 17, where we see the ten for the ten horns. Uh, flip back here for a second. And there came back to Revelation 17, the first um, first chapter, uh, first verse. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, 
I will show you unto thee the judgment of the great horse that set up, sits on upon many waters. Um, that's not the one. But right here, verse three. So he carried me away in the spirit and into the wilderness, and I saw a woman set upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven what? heads and what ten color? horns. What color? Scarlet. And scarlet. Okay. The scarlet colored beast is Revelation 12, verse 3. Let me pop that up. One second here. Sorry, I got so many windows popping up everywhere. But if you go to Revelation 12, verse 3, here is the scarlet colored beast. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. So here in Revelation 12, 3, we see the scarlet colored beast, which is a red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Okay? It's the same beast. Now, this one has seven crowns upon his head. So what, so what are the seven crowns on his head? So let's look. What are the heads of this thing? These are all this, those kingdoms you've seen before. The lion, right? You got the lion, you got the bear, you got the leopard, and the leopard had four wing, uh, wings of a fowl on it, right? There's the seven. He has crowns upon his head because if you look right here, where does it say it? Where we just read it, it says, and he was and is not right here. Verse 10, Revelation 17, verse 10, there are seven kings. These are the heads. There are five fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. So at the time John is writing this, okay, the five kings that were fallen, I think I'm reading the wrong verse. Yeah, I am. This ain't the one. My bad. Um, Sorry. Right. <laughs> I had to open up a bunch of tabs when I got home because I got home late, and I'm trying to organize them as I go. But these seven heads, the reason he has seven crowns on those heads is because all the seven previous kingdoms, Satan had influence all over them. He had dominion on all of them. So every, every one up to now, he is crowned because that was his. Remember when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness? He offered him dominion. Like, look, I will... Look, I will give you everything if you just bow down and worship to me. Jesus didn't rebuke Satan, all right, for saying, hey, you can't give me this stuff. It's not yours to give. No, it was. Satan had dominion, and he still does. So he didn't rebuke him for that. So that's why the seven heads have those crowns, because those were his. He influenced everybody from Babylon to now, and those are the seven heads of why. So... Backing up, and here's the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, I've heard you guys say seven hills. Yes. It's not hills, it's mountains. <clears throat> the okay. word is the same. No, it's not. A hill is yeah, totally, I can roll down a hill. It's YOLO in um, um, ancient Hebrew. It's the same word. Hills or mountains, same word. No, this is the King James. There's no hill in here. I'm sticking to this. <coughs> I know, but I'm, word. I'm saying where the <laughs> word comes from. Right, but the city on hill seven is... hills is the same as city on seven mountains. Is the same on anything. And <laughs> the Greek word. And well, not Greek. Hebrew. Okay. It's in Greek. Okay. Well, J Robert just punked me. All right. <laughs> well, anyway. Twice in one week. No. Anyway, uh, we have uh, coins. We have coins that go back to ancient Rome when Jesus was alive and you have seven hills on there with the the pontiff whoever was in charge on the on the coin you have the city of seven hills they are writing in that time I mean you you, you can't get around that I don't see hills I see mountains well you can you can say whatever Say whatever, but where are seven mountains? Okay, seven mountains are the seven continents of the world. You're That's... making stuff up now. No, that, uh, think about it. No, you're this... making stuff up now. Man. No, no, if anybody's making something up, you're saying it's hills. 
It's not. I can roll and sl- bobsled down a hill. I can't bobsled down a mountain. They're totally different. All right. It's tough, so, it's, I'm just saying it's bigger than a hill. Okay. Can I jump in here now? And are you are you done giving your your um, understanding, or do you got some more you can? Oh, I was going to say something. I'm, yeah, go ahead and say something. But I got there's. I'm going to tie it all in. Why is it? Why I'm went? Why I'm going here? So go ahead. Though. Well, first of all, the very end of Revelation 17 says the and the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. It is a city. A city and a country are two completely different things. There are cities inside countries, but a country isn't a city. They're two completely different. And now I'll add that the Vatican is both. And Vatican is actually a country and a city, which is quite yes, interesting. It is. But Revelation 17, 9 says, and we've read some Revelation 17, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. Now, as we go through the book of Revelation, he says here, here is he that hath wisdom. He knows this. You know, what is it? Chapter 13, the number of the beast is, is 666. So wisdom, that's what it's all about. All right, wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. All right, the woman is a city. The city sits in seven mountains. Now, I'll grant you, there is some interesting things going on with that. Because if we want to find out who Mystery Babylon is, we'd start looking in the world for, you know, what city sits on seven mountains or seven hills? Well, there's 17 of them. <laughs> uh, one of them, of course, is Rome, Italy. You go to Rome and it tells you, let me see, I've got here somewhere. You've got seven hills or seven mountains. And how many of those Guardian cities have taken over the world? Viminal Hill, Esqualine Hill, Capitoline Hill, Palatine Hill, Calalian Hill, and Aventine Hill. So there's seven different hills or mountains. But what's interesting is also um, the place called Constantinople is now Istanbul. Istanbul sits on seven hills. That's odd. Guess what Washington, D.C. sits on? Seven hills. <laughs> And there's so many different cities in the world that sit on seven hills. Uh, I looked that up on YouTube and Rome, Italy, of course. That's why I think it's speaking of is Rome. Edinburgh, Scotland, Washington, uh, Seattle, Washington, Richmond, Virginia sits on seven hills, Prague, Moscow. So it's quite interesting that there's all these different cities that sit on seven hills. But which one of these cities is and what it talks about here in the book of Revelation is some sort of a religion that is also political, that is also financial. And this city, and this narrows down the city, is a city that is a religious organization. It's the center of religion. It's the center of politics. And it's the center of merchandise. And we need to go to chapter 18 and read there because we haven't read chapter 18 yet. Okay. Um, real quick, though. Sure. You said it's a, it's about religion. Um, what verse you getting that from okay well she's made herself drunk with the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her all right so she has what did you say religion or political i said religion you, all you right said so religion happened. all right she's got a cup in her hand and the reason i said religion is actually in chapter 18 so we need to read 18 for me to show you that true so let's go to chapter 18 and read chapter 18 and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. Verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Hold on. Let me go break the phones real quick. <laughs> okay. I don't know if they'll work ever again, but they're gone. All right. Verse, verse uh, two, with a strong voice saying, "Babylon the great is fallen; has fallen; has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, of the cage of every unclean and hateful bird." Now, wherever this city is, it's full of demons. All right, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. There's the financial. And then we read verse eighteen that we're supposed to come out of her. Verse 5 says, For her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she was rewarded you. Double unto her double, according to her works, and the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. For she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. 
Now, it's interesting. The Vatican is where they have the Holy Mother Church, which is a religious exactly. church. It's, I was going to say right there. They're saying queen, man. They call, he, queen. they call Mary the queen of heaven, and they love to say that we're, we're a queen. Well, anyway, it goes there, and it says, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, verse 8, death of mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived delic deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and warn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and of fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thynine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass of iron and marble. She's definitely something to do with merchandise. Uh, some people say, and I haven't been able to find this lately, it's been scrubbed from the internet, but years ago my dad said this and I thought I read an article on it, that Visa, if you got a Visa card, Visa stands for Vatican International Sales Association. <laughs> so like Visa, huh? that's interesting. It's like they want to be the ones behind all the commerce. And who, certainly whoever this city is, she's doing that. And it says, uh, verse 13, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Notice that the most least important thing is men's souls to whoever this city is. Everything else is more important. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from me. I love all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from me, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Well, that really sounds like they're, they're uh, in. The they're in what color? What color religion are they in? What color because are they, they in? Dressed Purple and scarlet. That's that's the Pope's colors. I mean, that's the colors. Oh, of we're talking Catholic about a city. Church. We're not talking about a person. Well, the Vatican. All right. The Vatican fits in that city, and the Vatican is the head of the religious system right. of, of right. that. And and continuing here, it says, and in one hour, so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, and many as trade by sea, stood afar off. So whoever this is, it's by the sea, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, "What city is like unto this city?" Well. Some of these cities I mentioned that have seven mountains, they're not by the sea, but this one is. And verse 18, and they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costless, for in one hour she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Whoever her is, the city, she has done bad to God's people. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city of Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Now, here's where we see the religious aspect of this. And the voice of the harpers and musicians and, and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he shall he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more in thee. If you ever been to the Vatican, it's just statues everywhere. The craftsmen made all these different uh, architecture and things like that. And the light of a candle shall no more shine at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the men, great men of the earth. For thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So it's a place where people are bride and bridegroom. That sounds like you go to a church to become a bride and a bridegroom to get married. That's what it sounds like when I read this. But verse 24 says, and in here was found all the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. And here's the now, big thing. The Spanish well, Inquisition gonna... killed so many Christians, and that was centered from Rome. Oh, go ahead, Max. Yeah, I'm going to come in here with, with this whole thing. I can understand, you know, uh, America is very powerful. They have been for 100 years, something like that. But they don't have the blood of the saints on their hands. They don't. America doesn't. It's a Christian nation. And, and the main reason that they are so powerful is because it's basically a Christian nation. Obviously, now it's going to neo-paganism now, where there isn't a whole lot of Christians here anymore. But the whole country was based on Christianity. And we don't have bloods of saints 
on our hands. Okay. Right. Okay, now I, I got two okay. more verses. Right? Go ahead. This isn't the only place, Revelation 17 and Revelation 18, that talk about this. We also see it in Revelation 14, 8 and Revelation 16, 19. Again, we're told that it's a city. Revelation 14, 8 says, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because you made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And then Revelation 16, 19, the great city was divided into three parts, and the city of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So I see this woman is a city. And so Mystery Babylon, now did you, when you read Revelation 17, verse 5, when you read Mystery Babylon, did you read the comma? I was listening, but I didn't, I didn't go to that. Notice Revelation 17, 5, and upon her head was a name written, Mystery, comma, Babylon the Great. A lot of people, they just say Mystery Babylon the Great, but it, she is a mystery in herself, and she is Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I see her as a religious political financial system and so you can't and she's centered in a city but i see her more as this as this thing that has done so much evil upon the earth that it's almost like the illuminati or or it's almost like this this whole it, the devil system is the best way i could explain it and his system is centered in a certain city in a certain place in the world now why would it be called mystery babylon the great what does Babylon have to do with anything? And I'm babbling on right now, so excuse me. But, but <laughs> no, in, in the Bible, you look at Babylon and you look at historically Babylon. Babylon was a country in the Middle East. And all idol worship in the world starts in Babylon. Babylon is where the pagans started their mystery religion, the Aleutian Mysteries. And you go and you can find lots of old books uh, talk about this. The Two Babylons is a great book. And uh, Mastery, Babylon Mystery Religion is another one. I think Chick Tracks has Babylon Religion. And the devil's system, the devil's religion has always been the pagan religion. And it's a counterfeit of the true religion. And it's got its trinity, just like we have the true trinity. They've got their false trinity. And it's always been the adoration of a woman with a child. And it goes back to Nimrod and Semiramis and all this stuff. And so when I look at this Mystery Babylon, I think it contains more than just Vatican and Catholic Church. I think it has to do with Satan through the ages using the Babylon Mystery religion to politically take over the world and use it for his merchandise system, his financial system. And the book of Revelation even <laughs> explains that this is working with the beast. And what does it say in chapter 13? That when he gets control, he's going to make, make people take the mark of the beast, and you cannot buy or sell without the mark. That's an interesting idea. Is that so, it, it, that's, that's the what Antichrist, I have to say. The Antichrist system may not even be a religious system at all. <laughs> it could be but, a financial system, just period. Yeah. Because that's maybe what people worship. But see, the devil wants worship, and so he gets all this together. It, it all works together. The devil is into politics. Because that's where power is, you know. Um, the devil is money. His power is money and money is power. And the devil wants your soul. So if he can just set up a false religion that will take your soul, then he's happy. He's got everything. So I see it's made up of all three of these. I see the roots of Babylon, of the idol worship. And if you go to Vatican, there's idols everywhere. It's the oh, Mystery man. Babylon religion. They have stolen from the Mystery Babylon the, the teachings. For example, the Mass. The mass is not in the Bible. What is the mass? It's supposedly we can pull our God down from heaven and put him in a little piece of, of bread, and now you can eat God. That's cannibalism. But you go back to the ancient pagans in, in Central America, South America, ancient Babylon, they did that. They had their, their wafer God, their sun God they worshiped, that they said we, we eat him. So this all ties in with that is the way I see it. Yeah, and that's a lot, a lot of people see it that way, too. Yeah. And, and you know what? And I, here's what I'll say, and I'll say this, too, because I don't want to put you down, Brett, or, or, you know, attack what you're saying. But I think it all ties together because when you go to the United States Capitol in America, as with many other capitals around the world, I think somehow they're, they're, they're fornicating with that Vatican church. That's why she's, she's fornicating with the kings of the earth, because the Vatican is a political system. And you go to Washington D.C. There's this. There's. There's just 
idols everywhere. There's there's on top of the Capitol building a gigantic uh, woman, you know, who is that? Semiramis. So all of that's together. And, and you see upside down stars in the streets of the United States of America. You see the, the fingerprints of the devil in everything. And he has gotten into religion. He has gotten into politics. And he's working to get into the financial system so that everyone must be subservient to him and have a mark right here in the forehead or right here in the arm or on the right hand or they die. So Mystery Babylon encompasses all of that. You can't just narrow it down to say, well, it's just this country over here. I think you have to look at the whole picture. Yeah, so, I, but, I agree. Go ahead. All, all I want to say is that um, the only religion that is worldwide is Catholicism. That's it. You you can make a case for Seventh Day Adventism because they're in every country too. But Catholicism really has a root in everywhere, and what people think, and that's a really good basis for setting up some sort of worship, some sort of um, stuff. Right, and again, Revelation seventeen five, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So. She's the Catholic Church calls itself the Holy Mother Church, but she's got a bunch of little babies. She's she's a harlot herself, and she's got a bunch of little harlots. Every Protestant denomination out there. What happened in the 1500s? Well, Protestant churches started to come out of the Catholic Church, and we're seeing lately they're all going right back in, and that's called ecumenicalism. Even, even the Seventh Day Adventist. Well, and even Hindus and, and Muslims and, and other religions are starting to get together. And I yep. see what the devil's doing is he's setting up a one world religion, a one world bank. And then he's going to set up a one world government, the new world order. And so there's your three working together in this Babylon system. And so I believe the Catholic Church came and started Islam. Um, I don't have time to get into that, but I believe that Islam came from Catholicism. I already and, have uh, a video on it, man. <laughs> I do have a video about that and how they taught this guy Muhammad. And many of the things he taught, he learned from a wife that was a Catholic woman. And so a he mixed really, really rich Catholic woman. And, and guess what he did? He mixed Catholicism with the pagan worship where he was from. They worshiped the moon god named Allah. <laughs> so he took the name of their, their worship. And then he says, now you can't worship idols. And yet, what do they do in Islam? They worship a rock, a stone, and they kiss it. And it's a weird-looking rock. So they do have their idol. So I do see this Babylon thing is idol worship. It's it's full of demons. What do we look at when we today, still today in the news, is all about the um, Catholic Church and how they're molesting children. Oh, man. And you just see that fornication. And it, it's just, it's sad. You don't get saved it's in like that religion. If you're a bad you man, do you have to be a Catholic priest? Is that how it goes? Because it seems like <laughs> they literally, I looked, I mean, I watched Drudge Report and I was going to do a video on it, but it was kind of too unhappy for me to do. They had like 3,000 cases over 20 years and 130 uh, pastors in one state, in one city. Just one city! They're molesting kids. I mean, yeah, that's crazy. That is, that is insane. Now, um, why is that? Why are priests some of the most filthy, disgusting, most awful people in the world <coughs> that that rape kids? Well, because they tell them you can't get married, and yeah. you go to the Bible, and the Bible says if you're to be a bishop or a uh, elder or a pastor, you're supposed to be the husband of one wife. Why did they say? There's a verse. Let me look it up here. Forbidding to marry. Oh yeah, and that's what Apostle they're going to go Paul, to. But Apostle you know, Paul, they also forbid me from murdering people and raping people, and yeah. I'm not out doing that. The Apostle so Paul these tells guys us are different. They have <clears throat> they have some bad crap going. Yeah, the Apostle Paul says in First Timothy four one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now we just read about Mystery Babylon that it's full of devils, <laughs> that religion has demons and devils in it. Verse 2 says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. 
to molest a child, you have to have your conscience seared. You have to be a really wicked person to do something to that like that to a kid. That's disgusting. Repeatedly. And, and repeatedly. And verse 3 says, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. What is the religion in the world that forbids you to marry if you're a priest? Roman Catholicism, centered in the Vatican, centered in the city of Rome on seven hills or seven mountains. And they used to forbid you to eat meat on Fridays. Now, I think oh, they've they, done they, away they, with that. Man. We got Lent. We got to do fish. Exactly. So is God giving us kind of details and clues that, you know, it's all about that place centered in Rome and watch out for it? I, I am a completely in that camp. Okay, of uh, where it's Roman Catholicism, being as just they're just dirt bags left and right, and I don't understand how people can even follow Catholicism at all. I just don't get it because if I say something wrong, if I use a cuss word or something, then I'll, I'll lose like twenty subscribers or something. And <laughs> the Catholics out there. They're going to give 10% of their income out to people to go rape their kids. That's what you want. That's what you want. It's ridiculous. I hate it. I hate it. And I cannot see that there is some other system out there that is the end times Babylon, new Babylon, whatever you want to call it, being anything other than Catholicism. Okay. But see, it's more than just that. It's it's all that tied together. It's the devil's religion, the devil's financial system, and how, and, and this is what's interesting to me. If you study church history, you see the Catholic Church has always been in politics, and the Pope has set up kings and put kings down. There's a famous story of King... They still it, He still Pepin? does, man. Was, was it King Pepin? Was that his name? I, remember the, I can't remember the king's name, but I think he was... I think he was a king from Germany. He had to crawl on his knees in the snow to to Rome to ask apologies of the Pope. That's how scared he was because the Pope says, unless you do what I say, you're going to burn in hell. So the only city that I see that lines up with Mystery Babylon that has drunk in with the fornication of, of the kings and have set up kings is the Roman Catholic Church. And the Pope has set himself up as, I am God here on earth, and I put in charge. Oh, we're and I wear a hat that says, you know, uh, it says in place of God, vicar of Christ. I am in the place of God here on earth. And isn't that what the Bible warns us about again in Revelation? That the Antichrist, when he comes, he's going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem and say he is God. That's the big thing is that around, the only guy in this world that says he's God here on earth is the Pope. Yeah. <laughs> That's and what people, vicar of Christ means. Here's the thing with, with, you know, obviously when you're going off into doing prophecy and things like that, you, you have to have some interpretation. But if a guy is literally out there who has billions of dollars says, I am Christ on earth, um, you kind of can look at that as being, you don't have to look too hard with the prophecy there. Right, nobody falls for that. Right. <laughs> so, so, Brett, let's get back to what you were saying. I All can right. see how America can be part of that system. Oh, we I, are. Don't I, see, I, I, definitely. I don't see America only. Is what I'm saying. I think America right. might have their part because here's an interesting thing. The last two weeks, everyone's been glued to the news. Is Kavanaugh going to get in? Are they going to elect Kavanaugh or, or whatever and vote on Kavanaugh? This guy Kavanaugh claims to be a conservative. You know what he is? He's a Jesuit. <laughs> He's a Jesuit. And, and Washington, D.C. is full of Jesuits. Yep, and yep. Jesuits are the army of the Catholic Church. They were started by Ignatius de Loyola. They and call themselves people... the Army of Christ or the Army of Jesus. And they have a vow that is disgusting. Look it up on YouTube sometime. The vow that you have to take to become a, a Jesuit. Yes. Because it's... you literally vow that I'm going to kill any Protestant and I'll take their babies and, and just throw them up against the wall and bash their heads in until they die and things like that. All and right, Robert. their goal... I was going to say um, that the Jesuits are basically uh, have a Freemasonic vow. Sure. And they actually yeah. control the, the Catholic Church. Yeah. Catholics and, tried to get rid of them, and a lot of countries tried to get rid of Jesuits, and they came back in and they basically took over the Catholic Church. Sure. And it's called a guy called the Black Pope. 
Black That's Pope the guy the who Jesuit runs Pope. the Catholic Church. He does. And the white popes were actually under him. Yep. And the worst thing in the world that's so scary is that this guy right now that's the pope in Rome, he was a black pope before. Yeah, he was Jesuit. <laughs> and there's a rule within the Catholic Church that a Jesuit cannot, the black pope can never become the white pope. And he right. just did. So he broke the law of their church. Now, there was a guy named, and I don't, I don't believe this, but then again, in the 1500s, there was a guy named St. Malachi, who was a Catholic priest. And he said that he got a prophecy from God. Now, I don't know, might have been from the devil, but he said God showed him the next, what, 100 popes or however many it was. And his prophecy has come to fruition verbatim. And he said that the last pope will be the Antichrist. That's this guy. <laughs> it all led. So even the Catholic Church itself, by its own prophecies, says this guy's going to be the Antichrist or else it's the one right after him. So until it's they really creepy. It. It's really creepy. <laughs> until they change it. They say a lot of things until they decide that we're making a, a decree. Just like, eh, we didn't like abortion, but now abortion is cool. We didn't like evolution, but now evolution is cool. You know, they can do whatever they want to because, you know, Pope decree. I decree. Exactly. And you brought up masonry, and what is masonry? It's Luciferianism. Yep. And so this, all this is, is the religion of worshiping Lucifer. And the higher you get up in the Catholic Church, you realize that you really do worship Lucifer. They do the old switcheroo, and they say Jesus and Lucifer were brothers, but the real good one was Lucifer. Jesus wasn't that great, so really worship Lucifer. And there's videos on YouTube where you can go and listen to them do the mass in the Vatican, and they say, O Lucero, or Lucifer. And they're literally doing a mass, and they're dedicating it to Lucifer. So it all ties into what I've told you. Satan's political, religious, financial system is Mystery Babylon. And it seems to be centered in the Vatican. And if you go to the very center of the Vatican, you walk right in, there's four posts. And those posts look like giant snakes. <laughs> and the devil's the serpent. So anyway, go ahead, Brett. I want to hear what you have to say. Okay. Okay. Um... That's a lot. You guys said a lot. I don't know if I can get all that, but I'll, I'll okay. try. Do it. Do it. Do all right, it, here. Uh, Revelation 17, 1, where we first started. Okay. It also says, I will show you the judgment of the great whore that sit up on many waters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not only is it mountains, now it's also waters. Right. And what are these waters? These waters in Revelation 17, 15 people nations yep. and tongues yep yep peoples multitudes nations and tongues so mm -hmm. this picture we're getting that's setting on and i believe it's the continents of you know the seven continents of the mountains that's what i believe because i'm putting the two together because peoples multitudes nations and tongues this woman who's sitting on top of this beast okay is reigning all over the you know go to revelation 17 18. whoever this is this woman is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth basically whoever this is whoever babylon is reigns over the world is a control of everything over every continent every people nation tongues multitudes okay oh do we agree on that that whoever this is is reigning over everybody the entire world, yeah. And if you look at the Catholic Church, why well, she has her churches all over the world. So it Yeah, but they don't sense. they don't reign over anybody. They have no effect over the USA. Matter of fact, Trump just went to the UN last week and they laughed at him because he didn't want to give sovereignty over to unelected officials. He says I will not give up sovereignty to mm -hmm. unelected bureaucrats. Right. They he's against them. the new world. He's world against order, the new world it appears, order. It Correct. appears. So but you know, Trump was was taught in a Jesuit school. Yeah, but but <laughs> so, but listen to this though. You no, know, I like Trump. I still wonder about him. To be honest with you, I, but I like him. He's he's not a Christian. If that's what you time. mean, I, right? I've heard, there's there's I found two videos on where he says he doesn't ask God for forgiveness because he he feels that when he does something wrong, he makes it right. So he right. even said out of his own mouth. I he don't ask God for, yeah, he's prideful. He's boastful. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you see that in Ezekiel 28, which talks about the king in the end, who's going to be prideful and boastful. Right. But anyway, at the UN, they laughed at him. All these nations laughed at Trump for um, talking about 
the, um, how powerful and uh, how sovereignty of the U.S. And they rebuked him because they said it, they were calling it the law of the the powerful or the law of the strongest. And they were rejecting that notion because they want a um, one world system. And Trump yeah. said, no, 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 no. So this man named Emmanuel Macron came up after him France, yeah, from France. Yeah from France and he rebuked him and said to him that he, and, and this is what Emmanuel Macron's doing. He's setting up a 10 nation coalition. Right. Okay. Now this, these people hate USA. All right. They hate us because we will not submit to this <clears throat> one world government. Everybody okay? hates us because we have money. Yeah. But you just said that we are the, the one world. We are the mystery Babylon. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And what does it say? It says, they hate the whore. The ten, the ten horns, hate the whore, right? I don't, is, I don't see as the whore is a city. The United States is a country. That, right, that's Washington. Not the right, well, but I mean, it, it all stems from Washington, like Idaho. They even, don't do anything. Even still, how do you see United States as being a whore? We have trade that goes all around the world, but. And right. how is she drunk on the blood of the saints? How right. is the Washington, D.C. throughout history? They were only around since, what, 1700s? So I don't see how that can be the entire mystery of Babylon. Okay. All right, here it is then. So you're thinking that USA is a Christian country. We used to be. We used to be. Right. But well, we still are. Not anymore. No, we we're don't half either. and half. What I wouldn't even say that, but... <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, maybe not. We're neo-pagan right now. But the point is, the entire country was based on Christianity. The entire thing. Right. And the reason that we're so successful is because we're blessed by God because of our Christianity. Exactly. Right. Okay. So, the, to understand all this, you have to read Jeremiah 50 and 51, Revelation 17 and 18. Those go hand in hand. And you have to go all the way back to Daniel 7 and Daniel 8 to, to, so you can see the beginning of all these beasts that come up. So Daniel 7 and 8, Jeremiah 50, 51, which is the judgment of Babylon, and these two. You have to read, you have to have the whole counsel of God. You have to go back to the Old Testament and look to the revealing in the New Testament to see exactly how God set it up. For instance, um, we're, what we're talking about right now, um, Mystery Babylon has a mother. Okay, it says uh, in Jeremiah 50, 12, it says, Your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. And the reason I say that this is the hindermost. That means the last. So the last of the nations, the two last nations are what? Israel and America. We're, we're Where is America the last nation? What's that? Where is America the last nation? Of the nations, hindermost of the nations. We are one of the, we are a very young nation. Well, yeah, but. Not as young as Israel. Dude, I'm a Czechoslovakian, okay? That country does not exist anymore. They call it something else. What country? What, what are you talking about? Czechoslovakia. Okay. Okay, it's gone now. It doesn't matter if the the country doesn't exist anymore. Just like Burma, Burma is called Myanmar now. Everybody still calls it Burma, but some dictator took it over and called it Myanmar. Somebody took over whatever country I'm from and called it. Um, they called it Czech Republic and uh, Slovakia. They In Istanbul is Constantinople now. It's Istanbul yeah. now, Constantinople. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what point you're making. I'm sorry. I'm making I'm making the point that you're bringing that into where the mother church is coming down, and I'm getting feedback in my ears, no, so it's really hard to church. actually make my point <laughs> because I I keep listening to myself. But you're making the point where America is some sort of a daughter church or a daughter country or something that is spawned out of something else and it's Correct. really not well we come we come from europe we come from britain right right and we kicked the crap out of those guys yeah we back did. in 1776 that's right 
Yeah, amen. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, that, that's well, I see it, though. But we come no. from them. We are a nation born no, but of them. Back then, you still have the entire, all the Europe's are, are controlled by the Catholic Church. As far as religiosity goes, um, they're eventually, now they're in um, atheism now. They hate the church, so they're going to atheism. That's where they're at. But the the Catholic Church has been there since like right. 175 AD, something like that. I mean, the Catholic Church has always been there, always taken over, always controlled everything. Okay, then that's right. Look if at, uh... you want to find the ancient Babylon, there was a city in Babylon, the ancient city of Babylon, and it was around and it has been rebuilt, believe it or not. Now, this old book that, that I like to tell people to get a lot, Dispensational Truth, this guy wrote in 1900s, early 1900s. And when he wrote, there was no Babylon. Um, what was the guy's name that they toppled um, in the first Gulf War? Hussein, uh, the guy Hussein, he rebuilt the ancient city of Babylon. So Babylon has been rebuilt. Now, is that what the Bible's talking about? If you want to say that, then you might have an argument there because ancient Babylon is rebuilt. Uh, there's also, and, and where is the country, though? The name of the country now is not Babylon. The name of the country is Saudi Arabia. And uh, I think that's what you were trying to say there, Max, is that, that the names of the countries have changed. Well, have you guys ever looked at the city of Neom, N-O-E-M, Noem? That's what it's called, N-O, Noem. In Saudi Arabia, they're rebuilding a city. It's going to be the biggest city in the entire world. It's going to be $643 billion to build the most gigantic city in the entire world. And it will be the center of commercialism in the entire world. And could it be that the Bible's talking about Mr. Babylon, that city would be this city that's rebuilt in the ancient country of Babylon? That's just something to study and look into. I think it's quite interesting. They're going to build that city in the next seven years. <laughs> Interesting, seven years, and it's going to be—it's going to make New York City look like like a spot on on a map. It's going to be like twenty times bigger than New York City, and they'll have fast trains where you can go from this city all the way to uh, Jerusalem in like a minute, matter of hours. So could it be? And this guy, he said there had to be a rebuilding of of this this nation of, of Babylon. That's that's the thing is that so, the Bible actually says that, is that Babylon is being rebuilt. Yeah. So a lot of people go back and they say, well, you know, it, it here we know Babylon is in Iraq. We knew it. But the now city it has to be it has to be rebuilt now? No, this mm -hmm. is I believe it's a spiritual thing. You know, it's uh, I don't think it's spiritual. I well, think it's here's, I think here's it's both actually. It's actually both. There you go. I was yeah. gonna say what's amazing about the Bible is one prophecy can really like entail five different things. God's so amazing yeah. that when we all see it differently and yet we all say, Hey, this is right, this is what's happening. We'll probably all get to heaven and go, What were we thinking? It was this thing over here, and we were all yeah. wrong. Oh, Who yeah. knows? That's right. But Amen. What what I do see is I just read Jeremiah 51 and, and, and 50, like you said, and I do see that Babylon had the cup in its hand. And like I said, I think that goes back and ties it to what we're seeing today is just like the devil working in ancient Babylon. That's how he's working today. Yeah. But I just I don't I really don't see how you can say that it's a country and that America is Mr. Babylon. I think that's I, that's just I can't see that because oh well, here I'll I'll try to and it, I'll try to and I don't see how it's our country, and okay. if you say well it's the city of Washington D.C. I still don't see that because Washington D.C. is not in the Bible. I don't see Washington D.C. or even America in the Bible. I see in Daniel chapter two that that um, that man. Remember he saw that that vision of a man, and these are the kingdoms of the earth. Yeah. Well, the last one, the fourth kingdom, was of iron. And that was certainly uh, Rome. And as you go in, it branches off into the two legs, but it ends up with iron and clay. So I still see Rome being in charge, and it is. The Roman Empire ruled the world, and it still does today, but it's become a religious entity that politically controls the world financially. And it's still in their prophecy. But go ahead. I want you to talk. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, backing up what I just said about the mother thing, uh, Max, the verse before it, I should have read that too. 
you said because we're a Christian nation, and I and we both agree that well, we used to be. It's it's fallen mm-hmm. apart now. We're just a remnant now here. But yep. Jeremiah fifty eleven and twelve says, "Because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O you destroyers of my heritage, because you have grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellow as bulls, your mother shall be sore confounded that." She bear you, and she shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. The verse before that saying, you're destroyers of mine heritage. Right there yeah. is a prophecy of what we just talked about. We used to be a Christian nation, and look what it is today. America uh, is number one. And part is, of Jer- is Jeremiah here? I mean, I haven't read the entire chapter, but isn't Jeremiah talking to uh, Jewish people? And his right, but nation? this is a prophecy this is a this is a prophecy because it's a twofold because the Old Testament is you know the New Testament concealed, okay. So we look and we it compare. Is, but them. it's largely he's talking to Jew people, right? But it's still a prophecy that it's still. I mean, I don't know what you're saying, but it doesn't well, there's matter. There's a lot. There's a lot of Old Testament prophecies that have been fulfilled. Yeah. And. So I see the children of Israel went into Babylon and they were there 70 years and they came out. So that, that part of that prophecy has been fulfilled. Uh, you're trying to make it future. It's possible there's a double application there. But That's again, it would have to be the actual nation of Babylon, which today is Saudi Arabia. It can't just say, but that's America. Uh, I think you're stretching with that. Well, it's, um, you know, they show when God when, wrote these words down, is he's showing a physical thing that's happening on the earth, but it has a spiritual application towards a prophecy towards the end that we see. Of course it does, but I think in Jeremiah and, and what you brought up, it actually is directly to Jews. That's that's what I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds but, like it. Yeah, but the prophecies can still hold water, though. I mean, it's not like... It okay. can, but Jeremiah was there with the Jews saying, look, you need to listen to me or you're going to get messed up. They didn't listen to them, and they got messed up. That's what happened to the Jews. And the entire Old Testament is all about the Jews and how they're messing up and how, you know, you go into the New Testament, how we can learn from their mess-ups. Okay? Right. And But that's why, I'm, that's why I brought that word, hinder most, the last of the nations. You know, so this is an well, in-time prophetic event that he's also talking about. This did happen. All this did happen. Yep. But it's also he re- God repeats himself. Yes. It, history repeats itself over and over because people are the same. Sure. That's, yeah. that's the way but it is. But it's a city in a certain geographical place. Okay. So I, I would say this. I'd say and the more scarlet and purple. <laughs> yeah. But he's not talking about a human. He's talking about a city, right? Well, nice. The human, the human no, is the beast. I think the beast is the animal. Scarlet and purple. I think yeah. the, the beast is the Antichrist. So the Antichrist gives the woman a lot of power. And so well, the she, beast the beast is a kingdom. Well, in the other part of the book of Revelation, the Antichrist is the beast. Here's the here's Chapter the biggest 13. problem. With that. Okay. My main disagreements with this and this whole idea is because you have saints that are sacrificed by the beast, by the kingdom, by whatever you want to call it. None of, none of that happens in America. None of it. America is the one who is running the world. Okay. We have all of these SJW ideas yes. that just go all out over the world and everybody has to deal with it. Otherwise, America is going to go in there with their, with their stinger missiles and go shoot things down because that America is, 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 is like that. We reigneth over the kings of the earth. That's what I'm but trying to say. In the country itself, we are not a dictatorship. Okay? We got like 2,000 people in their representatives running the country and 60 people that are running Congress and then a president. You can't have a total world dictatorship with that sort of a setup. You can't. There's just no, going to be. Why, that's why I'm saying this Babylon. The great is hindering the UN. See, the UN hates us. They're, we are hindering them from a one world system. Everybody else in, in the rest of the world, as far as I know, is a dictatorship. Right. What, yeah. what you're trying to say, Brett, is the fact that this city is destroyed and the people hate the whore. 
you're trying to say they're going to hate America and burn yeah. America. But yeah. America, again, is a country, not just a city. And Mr. Babylon is a certain city in a certain place. And like I said, it entails a lot. And I think you have to remember it's the religion, the political, and the financial. And all of those. And the main religious, political, and financial center of the world is the Vatican. The Vatican rules the world in that sense and has for many, many years since it started in 325 AD. And if you church, study church history, you find the saints, the true Christians. And this is a good time to, to talk about this. There have always been true Bible-believing Christians throughout the last 2,000 years, and there's also been a false so-called Christian church, and that has been Rome. And Rome has always killed the true believers in Christ. And here's how you know who they were. Uh, all throughout history, when they first started, they were called Christians. They took a name called Paulicians. They were called Albigensians, Waldensians, uh, Catharii. Uh, a lot of different names of people that were true Christians throughout the last 2,000 years. Rome came along and says, we can't have you. We have to burn you at the stake. Why? Because these true Christians said, we don't believe in baptism of babies. We don't believe in the mass. And we do not believe that the Pope is our leader. And for that sin, the Catholic Church killed them. And by the estimate of some, somewhere between 35 to 50 million true Christians whose only evil sin was to believe the Bible over the tradition of that church were murdered by the Roman Catholic Church. So I see the whore drunken with the blood of the saints. That's the Roman religion that killed true Christians in the Spanish Inquisition and then even before. Oh, and there we talk about wars. Nazis too in World War II. Oh yeah. We talk about uh, Adolf Hitler and every single one of his lieutenants. Their big thing was we need to kill Jew people. And they were Catholic. Roman Catholic. And, and they Adolf Trump. Hitler was very proud of the fact that he modeled his military after the Roman Catholic order. <laughs> yep. yeah. uh -huh. yep. So I clearly see that's an evil, evil system. But I do see your point, Brett. I do see you. you I want to including America. Well, I want to include every nation on the earth because they're the kings that are that, that are working with the whore. But America. I don't see America as the whore. That's what well, I'm saying. Well, I'll say America. We reign over the earth. We have over 800 military bases in every country. 800 plus. Yeah, but we if don't you, own them. Okay, but do we? No, those are ours. <laughs> well, but no, do we we're really? Right, right. I see what you're there. saying. I see what you're saying. Right, like is we the we have those bases. All? all right. <laughs> every single president for the last however many was a CFR, was a Bilderberger, was. They're all part of these systems of these religious, uh, not religious, but these political groups. And if you look at them, they all have ties to Rome. They're all Jesuits. Okay. So I clearly see behind the I can the agree scenes, with that. Okay. That they're working in that. So what America has is power, but I believe that power is from the Pope. And he's okay. allowing us to do what we do. So I can agree with that by saying that America is the catalyst then. Because we have over 800 military bases all over the world. If you add up Russia, Britain, China, total 35. They have yeah. 35 military bases. I we think that we're, we are all in agreement on that. Okay. Is that okay. America is being used as a tool okay. to be the strong arm. So if Babylon, we know Babylon will be destroyed but, in one hour, right? Well, God can just speak words and everything's gone. So. Well, it says... Um, they, right in in the Bible, the cry over the city again. It's a city that is destroyed in one hour. Yeah. Okay. So w this, this mystery of Babylon or Babylon the Great, the mystery, um, is going to be destroyed in one hour. Okay. Right. That's fact. Well, well no, unless you believe that, in the gap not, hour. If you believe in the gap yeah. hour, it's going to be like a hundred thousand. All right. Years. Then I'll just say it like this: the mystery. It's going to be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's going to be destroyed. City. Why can't we agree? We agree. The city will be destroyed in one hour. I'm looking at okay. that verse for you. Okay. So, but I'm saying it's the, the city Vatican. That's destroyed. Okay. All right. If the Vatican gets destroyed, what does that do? It does nothing. The Earth won't mourn. the The, the economy won't bat an eye. The, the the wealth of the world will still keep on moving. The trades and everything will still move. I don't, it says, I don't think you understand how far deep that uh, Catholicism is. I mean, 
if the, uh, if the literal city of the Vatican were nuked, yeah. Yeah. nothing would happen to the world. The the merchants, uh, what does it say? The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for and, no man okay. buyeth their merchandise and if, anymore. And if you nuke St. Paul, Minneapolis, right now in the middle of the United States, nothing is going to happen either. That's right. Well, here's what I think, Brett. You're saying that from here on this side of how we see it today. But in Revelation, that's during the tribulation period. Things are different there. We don't know if the mark of the beast has already been given. We don't know if the Antichrist has taken over the world to where everyone is worshiping that, in Rome. That, that's, uh, and the Roman religion is the one world religion. So right, I think not, during that time, they will cry because it will be. Because well, I think saying, that's what it clearly tells us in the rest of the book of Revelation is that the devil takes over the world through the religion through the financial and through the political. Well, I'm saying that Mystery Babylon, when it when those missiles come down, that is the rapture. That's the start of everything. That's the catalyst it all off. Where's the missiles? I don't see the missiles. Are you adding something there? No, it says destroyed <laughs> by fire. I think you're speculating that it's going to be destroyed by missiles, right? Well, it says um, fire, so... I mean, okay, it, it will burn and there will be a fire, but there also is, a, if I remember correctly, an earthquake too. And earthquakes cause fire, especially when many people use gas. An earthquake breaks open the earth, well, then the gas comes out and a lot of things burn. Well, so, uh, I'm saying there's no earthquake here either. That we got, we got to be careful that we don't speculate, you know. And right. say things that aren't oh, in man, there. I'm going to speculate all over the place. Well, I'm, I don't I'm, know what you guys are talking about. I'm there's going to be missiles right in town. I'm not down. speculating at all. It says that's why I'm using Jeremiah fifty fifty one as a um, picture of a pattern of a type and shadow, because in Jeremiah fifty uh, fifty one verse three, it says, "Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow; and against him that lifted up himself against the brigadine, and spare ye not her young man; destroy her utterly, all her hosts." Um, I'm, I'm not understanding where you're you're associating this with the United States. I understand just Babylon. Not yet. I'm just saying the Babylon is going to be destroyed. It says, okay. "Spare no arrows." Right. So I'm looking at arrows and fire as today. If we see it, we don't use arrows. Okay. It says, "Make bright the arrows, gather the shields." We don't have shields, but the the picture I'm seeing, the type and shadow, would be a missile and fire. Right. That's where I'm getting that. I'm not just making it up. Well, um, we're not saying that you are. We're just saying the relation to the United States, which is a very young country. It's only 250 years old. Yeah, um, it's young. Okay. So and do we agree that, that that the whore is a city? Yes or no? <laughs> Let's just uh, go back to that. Yeah, I agree it's a city. We're going to go okay, back I'm to the fundamentals. We're, we're I know probably, we're going to go back to fundamentals. We, we probably don't agree it's the same city, but at least we believe it's a right. city. I'm going to ride my four-wheeler. <laughs> go ride your four-wheeler. <laughs> um, Where's my chainsaw? Well, anyway, but yeah. I would say so, you'd have to go back and, and look at what he's talking about. Because, like, for instance, he says the seven kings, right? Uh, so we're the seven kings right now then I'm looking at hold on, I gotta find the verse that's now. an excellent question we don't know they, they must come in the tribulation so it, you said earlier that's the rapture I see the rapture way before Revelation 17 I think it's um, all way before I all think that happens way before, and the beast there the beast ends up hating the whore <clears throat> and it right looks here. like the whore gives the beast power based on the antichrist so there's a lot of things that I don't know if you're seeing or not uh, I'm, I was thinking the same thing about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, but look, here it is. It says there, Revelation 17, 10, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. We can use the Bible to figure out who these are. So if we go back to... Um, um, first king would be... Right here, Daniel 8, verse 20 and 21, when he had that vision. He says, And the ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grisha, Greece. 
and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. So we know, because of where we're at today, we can look back who defeated Media and Persia. We know it's Alexander the Great, right? By just looking at history now, we can see who defeated the Medes and the Persians. Correct? Unless you're going to say that, like, George Washington is um, Alexander the Great. Oh. We don't have that same thing going on in our country. We don't have dictatorship at all. No, we're not even, we're not, I wouldn't even go there yet. But here's, what I'm, here's what I'm thinking I, I'm seeing you do is you're going back to the old prophecies that have already been fulfilled and trying to make those for future for today. And I think we need to stick with the book of Revelation as the prophecy for today and leave those old ones. Yeah, they can be a symbol or a type of something that may repeat. But I think those were fulfilled back then, many of them. Revelation is a future thing. And if we go to Revelation chapter 13... It talks about the beast. Revelation 13, 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns upon his horns, ten crowns upon his heads, the names of blasphemy. This is the future beast that the whore rides on. And verse 2, it talks about what it was like. It had great authority. But then verse 3 says, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. I see the beast being assassinated and then coming back to life. So his deadly wound, a deadly wound means he died. And that's when it has a short space or a short time. So that shows me, Revelation 17, 18, that's in the middle of the tribulation. I don't see the rapture okay, in the middle okay. of the tribulation. I see a rapture way before. Well, see, you're wanting to leave. You Old kind of, okay. Um, you're wanting to leave Old Testament. You're not wanting to go back and look. But it even says here, Daniel 8, I, I, I don't have a problem going back with and looking at the Old Testament. But you have to make sure you get a hold of Revelation first. Before All right, right here. you go back to that. Well, here you go. Daniel 8, 19. Okay, this is the verse before I said about the ram uh, having two horns of the kings of Medo-Persia. Daniel 8, 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee known what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. He just said, this is for end days. This is for the end time sure. right here. This vision, end time. That's why I'm using it to to cross-reference what we see in Revelation. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. You, and, and if it, if it does jive that it is talking about the end times and it lines up with revelation. Yes. There's a lot in Dan Daniel that agrees with revelation, right. but then there's some things in Daniel that have already happened. Right. And you can't but, say, no, that's future too. No, that was already, uh, whenever Alexander the great came into Jerusalem, when he was conquering everybody, he came into Jerusalem and they just opened the gates and said, come on in. We know who you are. You're the he goat. And he goes, what? Yeah, you're in the prophesied in Daniel. We know exactly who you are. Here's where it's written about. And he was he was flabbergasted. He's like, you made a book prophesied of me hundreds of years ago? Yeah, come on in. And so he didn't have to fight against Jerusalem. He just walked right in the gates. So there are some prophecies in Daniel that have been fulfilled. Then there are still a few future. And the only okay. way we know which ones are the ones that line up with the future book of Revelation. All right, I'll show you how this right here is talking about the seven kings. Okay. For, for, okay, go ahead. Yeah, it says, And behold, I will make thee known what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Talks about the ram with the two horns is Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Greece, which I believe is Alexander the Great, who had a horn between his eyes. He is, it says right here, he is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, and four kingdoms shall stand up out of that nation but not by his power, not by, they won't have the power as Alexander did, but they're his fort. When he died, four generals stood up and split the kingdoms up into four. Okay. Right. That that's five past, total, yeah. right. That's five total uh, kings right there. Now the next verse tells you, lets you know that this is in the end time. It says, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have come to fool and a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and pr practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning were as told was true. Wherefore, shut up thy vision, for it shall be for many days." 
and Daniel fainted. But through that, we know that this is the last kingdom. So we look there. When transgressors have come to full, what happens when God says transgression is at its fullness? We know that's judgment. Judgment comes when transgression has come to the full. And right there, transgression has come to the full at the last kingdom. And that's when Satan, the Antichrist, the king of fierce countenance, stands up and understand it. Right there, we can put that in with Revelation. And so... Okay. So the 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 and, couple verses you, between here. Go ahead. And so you said Daniel eight, the first part's talking about Alexander. He's from Greece. Hey guys, after Greece, be back in a minute. After okay. Greece, Rome took over. Correct. And, and here so it is. we're still under Rome because the Vatican Correct. is the city that rules the world. That's Rome. Yes, you so got it. Of, See, that's it. That, now listen. So out of out of Rome must come the beast. Is that what you're saying? No, no, this is, this is, we're, okay. we're trying to get the four kingdoms down right now. Then we'll understand what this beast is a lot better. Okay. Now we go back. There are seven kings, five are fallen. Okay. So we just realized that the five are fallen because we know the first king. Okay. Is Alexander. Okay. Four wings of a fowl came up after him. His four generals split up the kingdoms and they have four wings of a fowl because they spread to all four corners of the earth. Now, it says right here, and one is. So at the time John wrote this, it was Caesar that was in control. So he says five are fallen and one is. That means the one now, which was Caesar. But, and the other is not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. So this last king is at the very last. He's, he's going to be the leader of the free world at this, this last be the kingdom. Antichrist. No, no, the, the Antichrist is the eighth. So this one, the seventh, the be the Antichrist. correct. So the seventh is who's in charge before Mystery Babylon falls. That's the whole key. And who's in charge now? You're saying it's it's Trump. Donald Trump. He's in charge of yeah. America. Yeah. Because you have him as the head of America. Well, correct. the head of, of the world would be the guy who's in charge of the UN. Because the United Nations. No, this is the head. Of, well, they, they're, they're at odds. I mean, you. Trump yeah, just went over there sure. and told them all to stick it. You know, he said, exactly. no, I ain't falling for that. But so, he has the power behind him because we are the powerhouse of the world. We reign over the world. So, and that fits because what does it say? Right here. <clears throat> and the ten horns that thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as of yet, but received power as kings one hour with a beast. Why haven't these ten nations, these ten kings, received power? Because Babylon is in the way, just like we're seeing today. So if if we are truly think of this, if we are truly in the end days and we're looking for the rapture, we should start seeing all these things. And I do, and I see it all, and it's a, it's it's all lining up. So I can see Trump as being the leader of the free world. The UN hates us because we won't play ball. They want us destroyed. They want yep. they want to break us somehow. Well, here's here's something that I see too that ties into a lot of this also. The United Nations is made up probably 80% of Muslim nations. Yeah. This world has been taken over by Muslims. When the Antichrist takes over, he tells people, take the mark or else what? You die. The only religious organization in the world today as a political system that cuts people's heads off that don't obey is Islam. <clears throat> so I could clearly see that the Antichrist is a Muslim. And that when he does take over, he hates the whore. <laughs> and he hates her so much he turns against her because Islam and and Catholicism today, they don't they don't get along too well. Right. So and, and, I've always thought that that's what we're going to see. And it's interesting that there rose in America a man who claimed to be a uh, leader. <laughs> you still wonder about his birth certificate. And you know who I'm talking about, a guy named Obama that used to wear a ring. And on his ring, what does it say? Allah is God. Allah. And his name yeah, Allah is, is God. Barack Hussein Obama. Why Hussein? Well, that was the last name of the leader of Saudi Arabia. And so all these things you look at, and it's like I'm looking through a glass, you know. I, I can't see clearly, but I can start to see things coming together. So I see the whore as the Roman Catholic Church, and but it's more than just the Vatican and that city. I see it as the religious, political, financial system that it set up. And I do see the Antichrist hating it and probably turning against it and taking over the world. 
and that's possible that it could be done as the UN votes on ahead of the UN being a future Muslim leader. And those kings, I think, are still future Muslim kings. And so I could see all this coming together, but I just I can't go with you to say that Mr. Babylon is America. I don't see that. <laughs> and, and, so, and just like what you were saying, that uh, that we could be very well, we could be the catalyst. Because I think of this, too. Well, we're owned well, by them. Yeah, I don't want to use the word catalyst, but I know what you mean by the word. We could be the one that sets in motion the events of the United Nations taking over. And like you said, Trump is very anti-Muslim, very anti-globalist, and very anti-UN. So it could be that somehow something that they do to get rid of him helps spark the thing that the United Nations takes over the world and then this guy comes in. So I, I see what you're saying, okay? Yeah. And, and yeah, someone someone writes here, Assyrian, question mark. We are told in the Bible that the Antichrist is going to be an Assyrian. There's many passages that will tell us the type of the Antichrist. He's an Assyrian. He's from Syria. And uh, so, and also, he's, he doesn't have the love of women. That's why I always thought Obama would make a great Antichrist, because he's married to a guy named Michael. <laughs> right. so, and he's a Muslim. And, and uh, so he used well, to say the Antichrist has to be made up of all three races so that the whole world accepts him. Well, if you listen to Stephen well, Anderson, Obama, we're, we're all Jews. Jewish man. grandmother and grandfather. He's half black and he's half white. So, so interesting. And Jews. you know, when that guy showed up, the world worshipped him. And Obama was worshipped, and he was called he was called the second coming of Obama. And they were, you know what they called him? They called him the GOAT. The G-O-A-T. You look it up on the internet. Obama the GOAT. God of all things. That's what they called Obama. The God of all things. <clears throat> that is sick, man. Could he be the future Antichrist? I'll tell you what. If he's ever elected to the head of the UN, I'm like, Yep, rapture's coming right now. <laughs> That's the way I think. It looks right. like it's coming real soon. Right now, I'm not saying I know who, but I think... Uh, He's a candidate, as far as I'm concerned. I, I'm admit. looking at Emmanuel Macron, but that's that's just me. Um, I know a lot of people think him. Uh, there's other people that are saying the head of England. What's his name? Uh, the Prince... Prince uh, Charles, or... Prince, yeah. the, the prince that got married to that woman, the Middleton lady. Yeah. Uh, they think him, but think about this. This is all... In the Middle East, it's got to be somebody from the Middle East. It only makes sense that it comes out of that part of the world. Uh, so I don't, I don't think France, I don't think Europe. I think it has to come from over there. So some people are saying the Ergadon guy or the Syrian. Who's the guy in Syria? Bashad. And uh, so, brothers, we'll find out when we know. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But yeah, there's a guy in about... Russia that looks just like Jesus Christ. He says that he is Christ. He comes back, and you know, it's got to be that guy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so is that Gog or Magog or one of those guys? <laughs> no. Um, so I can I can look him up, but he's he's the guy who says he's Jesus Christ and everyone loves him. Yeah. So I don't think we can be too dogmatic on these things. We read it and we kind of like Paul says, we see through a glass darkly. We're like, oh, it could be this, could be that, could but it's not something that we dogmatically say, Well, you're wrong, brother, because it's this. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, we, you're we've all wrong. approached yeah, we've approached this with this is a non-essential because it's nothing to do with salvation. We could talk about it and say, well, I read it this way. I read it that way. And and I'm sorry, Brett, but you're wrong because <laughs> <no>. <laughs> you're it wrong, is, man. It, it is a city. The mystery of Babylon is a city or no, the, the whore is a city. But yeah. I think like I explained it, it, it just kind of it, it's all about how the devil works and how he's going to bring about his political, financial, religious system. City also Not, means state, uh, too. Well, okay. Do you guys agree with this statement that the Antichrist will control the entire world with a one world religion, with a one world financial system, the mark of the beast, and a one world government, the new world order? Yes. You at least agree with that, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's going to be controlled right. over um, financial things. Yeah. That's where it's going to be controlled. Exactly. They, the devil does not care about religious systems at all. Nah, um, right. As long as I don't think it's him. But he won. You know, it's I wanted to, I wanted to mention this earlier is that Roman Catholicism is deeply, deeply embedded in Freemasonic stuff. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Freemasons don't care what Bible they have on their shelf. They don't care. You can have the Quran up there. You can have the KJV. You can have yeah. whatever Bible you want as long as you 
do what you're supposed to do. Exactly. And I think that's going to be the system. Exactly. And, and, and I have a masonry, we have, look, look, I'm in a small town. We have masonries all over the place. Little tiny town, 5,000 people. Masonries. Where, where people just go and uh, go do whatever, you know, they think that they're uh, grand poobahs or something like that. And that, is, that is much worse than somebody following some a, a, a doctrine that they believe in or religion yeah. they believe in. Getting involved in a system that gets you benefits like free masonry. Oh, man. Oh, if you're a mason, well, you get 20% off on your tires, man. <laughs> that means that's that's how it works. Yep. I like that you said that because what does masonry call itself? It says masonry is the craft. Yeah. Sounds sounds like witchcraft, but they call masonry the craft. In Revelation 18:22, it's talking about the city, you know, Babylon. It says and no craftsman of whatever whatsoever craft he be. <laughs> so, I think certainly masonry ties into that. Many Catholic priests are masons. And masonry is is the craft that's part of the devil's system to help bring in his religion his financial system and his political system all right i would, I would like to mention one thing though um well actually before i do just something i'd like i, I seen um about the ten horns <laughs> are ten kings which have received no kingdom as of yet but received yeah. power as kings one hour with a beast mm -hmm. that one hour i believe is the whole seven years of tribulation because it talks well, about Revelation 2. Well, it's, it says it. It says, <laughs> I, will, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. Okay. Right. So you, I'm tying so, that in. So you, um, you, won't give, you won't give Max hill and mountain, but you'll go to hour seven years. Well, I'm doesn't sorry. it say, I will keep I you just, from the hour of temptation? I it also says hill. in the book of Revelation, there was space in heaven about half an hour. I right. think that was 30 minutes. There was silence, a silence in heaven for a space of about it. That wasn't three and a half years. I think I think it's three and a half years. I think because, you're stretching. I really think you're well, stretching. Well, here's, here's why. Um, okay. He says, I will keep you from the hour of trial, temptation, right? The hour of, that's the Jacob's trouble. So he uses one hour right there. So if you say there's silence in heaven week. for a half an hour, and you say, okay, that's the first half of the tribulation, why is there silence? You know, it makes you think. Like, um, I'm, I don't know where you're getting that. What? I can't go along with you on that, but okay. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying or, that. Which one? He, he says that it's the hour. I will keep you from that hour, right? So, yeah, is it a literal not, hour? That's not seven years. You well, can't, I'm just saying. Then what is? What's your think interpretation? It's a literal hour. Take the Bible literally first, as much as you can. Okay. Okay, but anyway, so I, I want to get off topic. <laughs> yeah, Revelation 8, oh, 1, man. and when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Mm -hmm. I would say that's 30 minutes, half an hour. I'm not going to say that's three and a half years. I don't want to. Revelation 8, man, you're you're burning the earth down <laughs> at that point. <laughs> the, burn, the, the earth is going to crap. Okay, I would like to just mention Every, this. All the Christians are gone. <laughs> We're gone, like man. To go back to where you're talking about merchants, okay? Because that seems um, yeah. not Vatican at all. Um, Revelation 18:3: For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants Vatican. of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicate. Um, nobody's made rich through the Vatican. They suck yes, up. They, they suck yes, they up. Are. All the money, they, they spend nothing. They spend nothing. They're they're not even in the top ten of imports and exports. They don't. There's no merchants coming in there and trying to. Uh, have it you, doesn't make have sense. Have you studied history of of why people went to Rome? Yeah. Well, we're, this is this is now, okay. like right now. Okay. So all, let's all throughout history, men would go to Rome to buy and sell. And they would buy and sell. And guess what the most, um, how do I say this nicely? Well, it's in the Bible. The thing they sold the most of was whores. Uh, Martin Luther was 
was uh, a Catholic. And he went to Rome and he was appalled. He was literally vomited on the streets by what he saw. There was so much prostitution. There was so many whores. Uh, they built, before they built the Vatican, they had what they called the Laterensian Temple. And that was the main place where they worshiped. Women were afraid to go into the Lateran Temple because the Pope would come around looking for women praying and he would take them right there on the altar and rape them. They were scared to death to go and pray in that church. They might be raped by the Pope. So the, the Vatican was a party where everyone getting drunk all the time and fornicating and people would go there to pay to get the best hookers, basically. So when I see, again, she was drunk with the wrath of her, the fornicating that's Rome to a T. Man, that's a fornicating place. People would go there to buy and sell, and they'd go there to waste, spend their money on whores. Cheap oh, yeah. And so we're I, in that. I do see that's a merchant merchandise. And, and, and that's it. Remember how the five are fallen, and the one that is was Caesar? Well, the next one to come after Caesar, it, he says, has not yet come because it's in the end days. That's where we're at. We are just uh, uh, trickle down from Rome. Everything is influenced by Rome. Everything in the I world today so. is influenced is. by Rome. Yeah, so, so that's wherever, the kingdom we're still in. Wherever he comes from, Rome sits in all these different cities, and the waters are different. So he can literally come out of any place but still be from Rome if Rome but, is in charge of the world. But, but I'm looking at the merchants of the earth are wax rich. Um, yeah, a I'm, lot I'm of looking right here. and became rich by going to Rome and buying and selling stuff. The right. Medici's also. Italy is where... You know who the Medici's are, right? Wait a second. Wait a second. Like Back up. I have no their... idea who the Medici's are. The Medici's were in, um, oh, what is that city where everybody goes by boat instead of roads? Venice? Uh, Venice. Venice, Italy. Venice is not far from Rome. Italy was the country where everyone bought and sell and all the merchandise of the world was through. The Medici's were the early rich millionaires who got by buying and selling became the richest people. And they, they would literally put their sons or daughters as popes. There's actually a woman pope. And the Medici line, for many years, the popes were from the Medicis or de Medici. Study the Medicis. They're interesting. They're from Venice. Yeah, Venice. And uh, they were some of the richest people. So Italy has been known for centuries, millennia, as the pleasure nice to buy and sell. Right, but that's we're, talking about, that's we're talking about we're talking about the last kingdom. That's exactly that's history. Today, here I got it pulled up. This is imports and exports. We do two point three trillion okay. in, in, in imports. Uh, Rome's not okay. In here. So you're saying because today, then then this can't be. But Correct. it's throughout the last two thousand years. <laughs> World War Two changed everything, and that's only been seventy years ago. So, yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand what you're saying, but well, we're does money about equal, the last um, kingdom on the last? Does, you know, does money equal influence? Oh, Is obviously. What you're talking about, and and yeah. here's another okay. thing: if you study the conspiracy if theories, saying, if you're saying money equal influence, the Roman Catholic Church makes way more money than the United States. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They have. 20 or 30 billion dollars in gold bullion i was gonna say the gold bullion in the vatican i yeah. actually i think i did a video on it they, they're the richest people on the planet and they're one yeah. city in one religion and it's because everybody who is part of their religion has to give 10 percent of their income to them and that's who they are all right how did you find out their money I would like Someone to look that posted up here the book by Avro Manhattan. Up. Vatican Billions. There it is. Read Vatican Billions by Avro Manhattan. Yep. Who's that? I mean, you guys are pulling out names and name dropping and saying this right. is Avro true. Avro Manhattan but... wrote a book called Vatican Billions, and he talks about how the Vatican got a hold and cornered the market and, and has got all the gold of the world and is sitting on it. And the majority of the gold bullion in the world is in the Vatican yep. and being and that's why, and people call this a conspiracy theory because now it's very hard to find this information, especially on the internet. But that's why they came out with the visa, Vatican International Sales Association, because they say, now we're the international bankers. And now because we have all this gold, well, now let's use this visa card. I see. And where did that come from? That goes back to the Knights Templars as well. And this all ties in with the Masons. They were the international bankers of their time, the Knights well, Templars. That goes, the way, goes way, way, way back. And the point being is that 
the Catholics have, have actual real money. Yeah. Everybody they, else they has They mint their money. own gold coins, even. Gold and silver coins. They mint them they, in the Vatican. They can do that because they have gold. They actually have real money. Their clothes are made of gold, which is incredible. The Pope wears clothes made of gold. Weird. America doesn't have anything. We have, we, nothing. we have pieces of paper that are debt notes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we got. They took away look our gold and silver. Every every dollar you pull out of your pocket, you can hold it up and say, look how in debt I am. Look, toilet look paper. The dollars you pull up. Yep. No, the Catholic Church, they have real money, real gold, real stuff. Um, they, you would compare them maybe to like King Solomon, maybe as to people who are being legitimately rich. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just going to say this, that um, I see what you're saying because I used to think it was Vatican too. But now that I go, I'm going through it, I absolutely don't see Vatican anywhere. I don't see it at all. I okay. believe we are the, this world, this Babylon, that uh, this kingdom, this w one world system that rules over the world that this woman rides. I, if the Vatican is behind it, you know, that's that's fine. I can go with that. But I believe it's America who's doing all this fornication. We, we're the number one sales of pornography. I mean, you name it, we're number one at it. That from imports to exports to whatever heinous thing is done. And I know, Max, you say well, we're a Christian and we don't do anything. We don't have the blood of the saints. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now that for the last 50 years, behind closed doors, there's some atrocities that would just make your head spin. And that, yeah, we're not a part of that. We don't see that. But we get we step into other countries. That's why we have all these military bases there, because we steer everybody the way we want. If someone uh, goes against the petrodollar, we will destroy them. You know, it, we're not going to let them tamper with the um, our currency. You know, we n notice that, that it's the American dollar that reigns supreme. That's what everybody uses. But on everybody a wants that. Nothing. I understand that. I understand it might what be, you're talking it's about. still used. I understand what you're talking about. But on a spiritual level, okay, yeah. spiritual level, America is mystery Babylon. Yeah, I don't see it. I America is the melting pot of all sorts of different religions. We all get together and we all go do our thing. Yeah. It's basically well, it's a Christian country, but we also do have Hindus here. We have uh, Buddhists here. We have Muslims here. We have everybody else. Right. We're fine. It's not, it, well, there, is, there is no centered, there is nothing in the country and it's impossible for a leader of the country to actually create the new world order because you have so many thousands of people that have to elect these people and have to put them into power. It's impossible. Amen. So we can agree to disagree, amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think we should start taking questions. Yeah, we'll really take fast, questions and then we're going to be before done. Before we get to a question, let me just say this one thing. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, studying church history in the last 2,000 years, the true church and the fake church, the Catholic church being, of course, the false church, the true church has always gone to Revelation chapter 17 and said, this is the Vatican. This is Catholicism. This is the Roman Catholic Church. I love to read things from the 14 and 15 and 1600s. And I love one of my favorite books is an old book from the 1588 written in Old Spanish in which Cassio, uh, Cipriano de Valera says the Pope is a pimp <laughs> and the Roman Catholic Church is Mystery Babylon. So however we want to look at it, historically, true Christians have always said that's Rome. That's Rome. And they've always seen it that way through church history. And so that's just something also to throw out there and to remind us of. That's quite interesting. So and, with and, that, and I would also say that that is an old, old um, theologian's point of view that never even knew America would exist today the way we do exist. We reign over sure. the kings of the world. They didn't see that. This is for us to see. And, you know, so I'm just I just want to mention that. Well, the thing I love about the Bible is it's for all different times. 
what what people saw back then and what we see yeah. today may be different, but it was still true. And that's and the thing that it I was still something is, that, if, that helped us to trust God even more. Go ahead. If America was such a big deal, why wasn't it talked about in the Bible? I mean, we kicked the crap out of Britain, which actually ran the world. Because it's we mystery. The crap out of them. Mystery of America, the great. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean. That's it. Oh, okay. So, America, the, think blind, America the blind is. justice woman. She's a whore. Okay, I got it. I don't think America is that important. That's Ishtar. Yeah. Okay. I honestly don't. Right. You know, I mean, I, it's a great place. I'm lucky enough to uh, grow up in America. I really I love it. Um, except for the last three weeks, it's been terrible outside. It's been like 35 degrees, and rainy. Uh, I'll don't take like it. Degrees. It's humid here. Uh, it's 35 degrees here and humid. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But you know, I grew up with the. Uh, basically the freedom to do whatever the heck I want. And that is to my detriment and also to, you know, the positive things that I do with my life. Well, I'm allowed to do that. And America okay. allows that and makes that. But you can't do in other countries. Yep. Yeah. You can't do that in Iraq. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, a lot so, of people say, what happens to America? Do you think America gets destroyed? Let me just throw that out and let's, let's, uh, let's start on, on questions, but let me just say this. When Jesus comes back at Armageddon, it says that he takes the sheep nations and he takes the goat nations and he separates them. And the goat nations end up going to hell. So there must be some, plural, not just nation, Israel, there must be more than one nation that is still in favor of Israel, even at the end of the tribulation. And God saves those people and lets them enter into his kingdom. So I, a lot of people say America will be completely destroyed. But there's got to be somebody left, some nations left, that are still in favor of Israel. And I think that has to be America. I know Honduras and Guatemala are two other countries that are allies with Israel at least. So I, I don't completely see the destruction of America. I do see America becoming uh, probably way divided with different military zones and, and the New World Order trying to divide up America. But I don't see the complete destruction of it. But that's just me. So anyway. We all have our own ideas, man. Right. We're all going crazy. Yeah, Amen. It's the end of the world as we know it. That's right. Hey, all right. Did everybody see we the didn't... movie 2012? Do you remember that movie? I did. I didn't there's, like it. There's a scene where there's an earthquake <laughs> in the Vatican, and the Pope's standing out in front of the Vatican, and the earth opens up, and he falls off the balcony. And I was just like, <laughs> 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 I think that's very similar to what it'll be like in the tribulation. Do you say that? <laughs> do you think the pope is the antichrist um hmm. son of son of uh perdition or the um or oh, i'm sorry false prophet yeah there you go false that, prophet. that's what i think the false prophet is is the pope and the antichrist is a man but i've heard so, it different ways people say the false prophet fits muhammad he was a false prophet so why would he bomb himself so i don't know I don't Why would he destroy his own city? <laughs> Muhammad Dude, the false, false prophet or the Antichrist? The false prophet. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that 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 confuses me. If it's the Vatican is the false yeah. prophet, why would he blow up his own place? But I don't know. Well, like I say, for centuries, Christians have thought that Pope is the Antichrist, and they've been saying that. Uh, even in the last 40, 50 years, who's that famous guy in, in England or in Ireland? Uh, Eon Paisley. And he was a part of the Lord uh, of uh, not a Lord, but he was the House of Parliament. And he stood up when the Pope visited and said, "The Pope is the Antichrist." I don't know if the Pope is the actual Antichrist. I, I personally lean toward he's the false prophet, and the Antichrist will be somebody else. But they work hand in hand. Right. And I didn't I think, mean to say Antichrist. I meant false but, prophet. But, uh, but, but, anyway. but even still, I don't. I don't wow, we all that. agree on something. Holy crap! Well, it goes back to why would he bomb himself? If he's the false prophet, why is he going <clears> to <throat> blow his house up? Right. Old bomber. So, well, there's a question. Do you think the one world government is the UN, Islam, or Catholicism? I think it's all wrapped into that all of these systems will unite under the United Nations. And I think the United Nations will be where the Antichrist comes and takes over. And he becomes the head of the UN. Now he's the one world leader of the world. So that's what I think personally. They all unite under the UN. 
Well, right. the other thing too is if we are in the end days, and if we know that it's it's this is all about to end, do we see anything that would match what's being said? The ten horns, and I see it as the ten nation coalition. That is UN. So I'd say it is the UN because it also says they have w one mind. Mm -hmm. Right. They all have one mind. So they all end up believing the same. Well, what is a, a way to have one mind unless Islam takes over? Islam means submission. And under Islam, everyone has to believe exactly alike or <laughs> Sharia law is you do what we say or your head gets cut off. That's one mind. Everyone believing the hive mentality. So, yeah, interesting. Um. Infinite Architect, I, it's Robert Breaker, but I, I believe that the five are fallen are Alexander and his four generals. And the one that is was Caesar, because that's the time that he wrote it. And the other has not yet come. I believe that's today Trump. Right. And I, I don't he know. Comes, he must continue in a short space, meaning that tells me Trump's not even going to finish his uh, first term. That's the way I see it, and that's I'm putting the pieces together. If tomorrow's the rapture, do we see any of this stuff today? And that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, I, I can see Trump being the seventh king, the well, last Trump. He's the last Trump, man. And, and you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Check this out. Rouhani, right? You know him, uh, Iran's president, right? That's where all this stuff started, right? You know, Iran hates us. We had We broke the Iran deal, blah, blah. Well, Rahani's name backwards is in an hour. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. So seven uh, years? No. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, I don't know about the five kings. I, I like I said, I believe prophecies in the Bible can have more than one thing. So it could be like you said, Brett, there's throughout history this many kings, but I kind of personally lead toward there's a future time and it might be now. The first, second, third king have already passed. I don't know, but um I do think that, you know. It's future, but also it might have something to do with what's already happened in the past. I, I, when I don't know, I don't know. I'm not going to go out on the limb. Amen. Well, amen. I'm there you go. Say you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Everybody has heaven, like we'll know. grand expectations for everybody that I'm going to tell you exactly like this is exactly the way that it goes. And mm -hmm. when somebody says, me, eh, I don't know, <laughs> they're, <Yeah. laughs> they're just they're just like. Well, you're not gonna tell me. I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, un I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Unsubscribe. Yeah. Get rid of those people out there. They don't know. They don't know. They're trying to yeah. tell me something. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no. It's, there are some things out there in the Bible that you can't be dogmatic about. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Well, and here's the amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. Here's the amazing thing. Right, we were reading, you know, Revelation um, 17 and 18, and talking about mystery Babylon, and and um, giving our opinions on how we're seeing it. But he even says in there, w those with wisdom. Okay, so you have to have wisdom from God to even understand even any of this. You know, it says, and here's the mind which hath wisdom. So you have to ask God to lead you in this stuff. You know, and I and I hope that you let the Holy Spirit lead you and you get rid of any preconceived notions and learn it for yourself and don't go on what the theologians say. Find out for yourself and read it and dig in and say, look, I'm going to look into this and, and come up with your own um, uh, relationship of you know, reading God's word. For me, that's what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not trying to sit there and make up stuff. And but I the way I see it, I'm using Daniel seven, Daniel eight. Jeremiah 50, 51, Revelation 17 and 18. And I believe all three of those are prophetic in itself. And that's the way I see it, because it mentions in the latter times, in the end of King with Fear. I put it all together. You have to have the whole counsel of God, you know. That's the way I see it. Someone's kids yelling. Yeah. <laughs> He's laughing now. <laughs> okay. All right. That's what we got. And, um, do you guys have any uh, closing comments? Otherwise, I'm going to go all the way through chat and uh, try and figure some out. If you guys want to answer, uh, do questions, do at Max Bauer, at uh, Rubber Breaker, at The Last Generation. And uh, 
we'll do that and then we're going to call it because we've been going for about two hours pretty long stream actually don't yeah. Oh, hey, what's up, James? What's up, Christian? Didn't know you were here. Okay. Well, I'm about done, so yeah. whatever you guys want. Uh, someone asked a question. I just responded in the chat about um, Pope's clothes. So I'm not even going to talk about that. I just responded, so I'm I'm done with that. Anything yeah. else, guys? Uh, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, how do you know that the second coming is soon? People for a long time have been saying that their time period is the end times. Second coming is soon. What? Um, it's soon, he said. Soon, S O O N. Soon. Okay. Yeah, I don't see that question, but there it is. It, yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> we we see Israel 70 years old. That's a pretty big sign. And then we see the mark of the beast already. People are getting chips injected under their skin. I mean, just everything seems to be pointing to last days, end times, for sure. So, yeah. Talking about the Pope's hat, um, we already talked about the Pope's hat. <laughs> and uh, we already talked about UN Islam and Catholicism. So we're going to scroll past that. Keep on yeah. going. Don't talk about the Pope's nose. You know what the Pope's nose is? Well, no, they said that you have a nice nose. That's no, what they said. No, they said that I you're wanna, like a I very answer that question. You're, you're, so you're a beautiful man. It's a, it's a Japheth beautiful nose. Beautiful man. Uh, look, look, at, look at your yeah. nose. It's so perfect. But, uh, but have you ever um, cleaned a chicken? <laughs> and the little piece on the back of the chicken <laughs> that he raises the 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 the, the feathers up on. That little piece of skin, it's called the Pope's nose. Because <laughs> mm, wow. it kind of looks like a nose sticking out. Uh, I met a lady when we were cleaning chicken. She says, save the Pope's nose for me. I want to eat it. And that's the little gland where the oil comes out. And she cut off the Pope's nose, and she loved to eat them fried. That's so weird. <laughs> okay. There's a so question. Anyway. The GNPT, which is, his name is Christian, by the way. Mm -hmm. He's asking, who are my people in Revelation 18.4? Well, you probably shouldn't be in Revelation 18.4 yeah. if it's your people. Where does it say my people? Let's see. Yeah, well, I heard really... another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye oh, be not oh, perfect. Jesus. Okay, <laughs> that, that's clear. If that's tribulation, that would be tribulation saints. Don't um, stay in there because if you stay in there, they'll make you take the mark. And yeah, that not... kind of goes back to Islam. They will force people on beheading to take the mark. So get out. Get away from it. Don't take the mark of the beast if you don't go with the rapture and you're left behind in the population. <clears throat> right. And here's the thing. It's like, don't plan on being here. The reason that we're we're having this discussion and we can disagree and just kind of philosophize and talk about what we're talking about is we don't expect you guys out there who are listening to us, save people, are actually going to be here for this. Yeah. It's just kind of a thing here's, that here's, we want to talk about. Right. And, and here's what <laughs> I'd, I'd like to add to that. The, the revelation is not chronological. See, the way I see Revelation 17 and 18 is talking about two chapters, two whole chapters talking about Babylon and the fall of Babylon. That, I believe, Revelation 18, 4, come out of her, my people, I believe that is the rapture. I don't think that this is chronological at all. I think that Babylon needs to be removed in order for the fourth beast system to come into place because Babylon is riding the beast who's in charge of the whole world, but the fourth beast can't come until that woman is knocked off of the beast so he can take over and do his thing. That's the whole picture I get. So he can't come with his... And we know that when he starts the Antichrist revealing, that starts the uh, seven years. He can't even reveal himself. He can't even start the fourth beast uh, kingdom until Babylon is knocked off of this beast. And this beast that he, she's riding is the Roman beast from Caesar trickled down all the way till today. That's how I see it. Got to knock the woman off the beast, and that's what anti Antichrist is wanting to do. I might as well just say Satan. It's Satan. He's, that's what he wants to do. Swat her off. Because if you notice, the ten horns don't have crowns. They don't have kingdoms yet. They have to 
knock the woman off the beast, and then one hour with the beast, they get crowns because we're out of the way. Mm-hmm. We're against the system. We're against globalism. Can't have that. Can't have a superpower in a one world system. Oh, come on. Can't have a superpower? You live in America. <laughs> That's right. The well, biggest I'm... superpower. We're, we're Cooper Power. Yeah, we ran up on the world. Well, I went into all kinds of things. We went to the moon too, man. Did you, did you hear about that? We went to the moon. Hey, you you want to hear something we... interesting uh, before okay. before we get off of here? Mm-hmm. Want to hear something really cool? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all see. right. Uh, I'm listening. I have to find it now because this is nothing there. Um, do you remember uh, Space Force that Trump's talking about? Well, I don't know. Trump does yeah. whatever. Yeah, I remember he's, that. Yeah, he's talking about taking um, the military, a branch of the military, and putting all this stuff yeah. out there to, I don't know, missiles and stuff so we can have a you know, Star Wars type thing out there. Um, I'm going to have to find it. And... It'll probably take me a second. So take a take a question or something. I'll find it right now, and I'll show you. Oh man, question: Are you hungry? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was we're my... all hungry. <laughs> yeah, we are all hungry at this point. We've been going for a longer live stream than we have ever done before. Someone asked real quickly: yes. Is John still alive? Now, why would they ask that? Because Jesus said in John chapter twenty-one, that, "What is it unto thee if he tarry till I come?" And they, the, uh, the the disciples were all like, what does that mean? He's not going to die? Well, he's not going to die until he sees the things happening in the future. And the book of John, or Revelation was written by John, and he saw Christ coming in a vision. So I think that's what that applies to. So yes, John is dead. But he didn't die until he saw Jesus coming in the sense that he saw him in the vision, and he saw him when he wrote the book of Revelation. So I think that's what it, it, it applies to. That was an interesting question. Good question. Jesse Wooten at Robert, do you think the Antichrist is the same bloodline as Judas? And and the reason Why? he asks that is because Judas is called the son of perdition, and the Antichrist is also called the son of perdition. But is it the actual same DNA? Now that's an interesting question. They are selling us today that the Shroud of Turin is really Jesus. What if the Shroud of Turin was Judas? <laughs> because... <laughs> This is interesting. I read an article several years ago, and that article says they are going to try to clone the DNA. I read an article years ago where they want to clone the DNA of the Shroud of Turin. What mm. if they literally cloned the body of Judas all over again, and that he really is the same DNA? But I, I don't know. I think he's son of perdition. I don't think it's going to be the exact same body. But interesting question. Interesting question. Anyway, I found that verse. Okay, go ahead. So this is just another thing I saw. Trump's talking about putting military in space to start the Star Wars thing. And just in Jeremiah 51, 53, it says, Though Babylon should mount to the heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me, spoilers, come unto her, saith the Lord. So even right there, he's saying, even if you guys do build your little space station out there, you're still going to be destroyed. So I thought that was pretty amazing too, how I can still see stuff today talking about going into the heavens and putting some lasers out there. He says, even if you do, it sounds like we don't because he says, though Babylon should mount up to heaven and though she should fortify, which is to make stronger the height of her strength. See right there, it tells you right there. You're, even if you do. I'm still destroying Babylon. Hmm. Well, I don't know throw that in there. Yeah, what it, it comes is. down to is if you live in Babylon, you're getting destroyed. And it's just point blank. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't be in Babylon. Don't don't go to Babylon. Don't live in the Vatican and Rome. Just just stay away from those areas. Just go off in the woods, man. Go and and Brett, Brett will tell you don't live in Washington, D.C. or America. So move to Canada. No, no. See, that's kidding. Why it's the I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. Oh, okay. That was funny. Yeah, it kind of was, was. Funny. Yeah. All right. I would no, go south. I would go to Honduras. Honduras? 
Uh, there ain't going to be no safe Mexico. place on this earth. No, no. If you miss the rapture, you'll never be safe. No. You, you literally, the best way to heaven, the, the first class ticket is to get your head cut off. I mean, if you're left behind at the rapture, just find the people given the mark of the beast. And no, just I'm going to buy a tent. Turn in line and say, I don't want it here. And let them Alex cut it off. Alex Jones told me I need to buy bone broth. And that's yeah, going to save broth. me. The bone broth. The bone, bone broth. broth. <laughs> Get the yeah. tea. Buy the tea. And, and you know, Alex Jones just might make it through the tribulation. That would be pretty <laughs> incredible. He's mean enough that he might chase them away. But, uh, but if he was making through all that seven years, he'd come out looking he like the he dirty wouldn't gladiator. The yeah. Well, he might be one of the two witnesses. Who knows? No. Because uh, out of his mouth cometh fire, oftentimes. But uh, wow. yeah, be careful, because the Bible says I can't remember where in Revelation that there are the souls of them that were beheaded for Jesus before the throne of God. So we know one thing: if you miss the rapture, the way to heaven is get your head cut off. So the sooner you get it chopped off for Jesus, the better. Well, and that's the same way that you know it's hard to preach the way that that we do in today's day and age, because it's like. Boy, if I just commit suicide, then I'm going to be better off. Yeah, but don't do that. Ooh, what about the part where it says for five months they'll try to find death but won't find it? Uh-oh. Yeah, how, no, how do you I'm try to about... die but you can't? That's odd. That's Yeah, I don't even want to think about that. No, I'm talking oh. about like your life sucks, and rather than actually living through it, you actually decide to take your own life. And there are some pastors out there who actually preach that that is unforgivable sin. You're going to hell because you committed suicide. And it's hard to preach about faith alone and not have things like this come up, you know. And <laughs> it's like... I hear you. Well, yeah. what's, what's what are they saying? Yeah, They're saying you're, that you're killing yourself and that's murder. That's a sin, right? So they're saying that's there's a sin. You didn't have time to ask for forgiveness. Well, it's not asking for for forgiveness. It's that you intentionally took your own life, right? And that is a big deal. And they're like, well, if it's faith alone, anyways, then I guess I'm saved. And it's like, yeah, you probably are. But what the hell could you have been doing if you're well, probably, continued living? No probably about it. If you're saved, you can't lose it. Now, you can do dumb things, and that's be a dumb thing to do. But your soul is saved. So all yeah. you did was kill the body, and your soul went immediately to heaven. Amen. Yeah, but that's a dumb thing to do because we're in this body to get rewards in heaven by serving the Lord. And so you're going to take out that opportunity to get more rewards for Jesus and do more for him? That's very like selfish. That. That's very selfish because the Bible says you're not your own. You're bought with a price. It's not your life to take. It's his. So why are some you? Do, the, why would you do that? That'd be some awful. of the most selfish thing that I could actually even think of, and to blame that stuff on God, um, really ticks me off. But I understand that it happens, and you know, people have issues in their life, and they do commit suicide. They do. Samson did murder people. I mean. Yeah, they yeah. they do that stuff, but to blame that shit on God, oh no, is is is, is ridiculous, man. You don't blame it on him. Okay, Maybe you could do that again. The crap theory; it always goes to crap. There we oh, go. Oh man, don't <laughs> tell me what the crap theory. We're gonna talk okay. about the crap theory. Well, on that happy note, <laughs> let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the youth of edifying. Um, yeah, on that happy note, are there any more questions? You already answered the one that, see, the Holy Ghost. No, we're not ghosts. Jesus came in his new body, and I believe that's the same body we'll have. Glorified body, yeah. yeah. Nero and being the Antichrist. Nero being the Antichrist is the Roman Catholic teaching. Yeah, a, pr a preterism or something that supposedly the book uh, of Revelation is all past and not I'm future. A, I don't I'm believe that. Realism. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Language, Max. Watch your mouth. Amen. Oh, man. <laughs> I used a poopy word. Yeah, you need to be careful of that. I spent two hours. I have to, like, spin them off now. Okay. Well, if we keep going, we're going to get more questions. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, um, we're good. I don't have anything. Uh, okay. Comes up for me. Yeah. Well, I'll say one final oh. thing that I'm thinking about, and it's um, I pray, and it's sad to see that a lot of people just aren't reading the scriptures and getting closer to God. But I pray that you all would. Um, I have my views. Robert has his. Max has his. But we can all three sit here, and at the end of the day, we can laugh and joke together because we know we're all going to be in heaven with a full understanding and all be in one accord at that time. But right now we're looking through a glass dimly lit. And the, the way I see it now is, and, I, and if I'm wrong, so be it. But the bottom line is I can see right now all these people are coming against America because we're standing in the way of their one, na one world government. Right. So either way, stuff's going to get a lot harder now. And just stay in the word, get closer to God, and, and just, you know, pray for wisdom. Amen. 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 And watch your mouth. Amen. What? <laughs> watch Dude, what you I say. said one bad word in All two right. and a half hours. That's Come pretty on. good, actually. That's pretty good. Yeah, See, seven live streams. That would be the second. So that you're, I guess that's a record. Amen. Yeah, it's pretty good. But, um, but amen. Well, records. the rapture is coming soon. But until it does, be busy telling people about how to be saved. The Gospels, First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. All about the blood atonement of Christ, Romans 3.25, what Jesus did. So I encourage everybody to go win somebody to Jesus. Amen. That's what Amen. it's all about. Amen. Exactly. And what we were talking about here is about the seeing things in the future that are happening in Mystery Babylon and things like that. That's what we're talking about. Um, you're saved. You're not going to be here to even watch this. You're not yeah. even going to be here. Right. <laughs> you're going to be gone. So, right. It's 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 a fun study. We're having fun here. Yes. It's fun to and, shoot the breeze and see how we see it. I like that. Exactly. Hey, Amen. So yeah. Go check out Robert Breaker. Go check out the last generation. Go check out Max Bauer. Go do whatever you're going to do. And uh, with that, if you have questions, leave the comments on the thing. Okay. And I think we'll be out of here. All, All right, right, guys. Peace. All right. All right. God bless you.